got a I got a uh, Mazda uh, CR or CX or whatever the hell it is 2019 Mazda 5 series thing whatever it is and I'm gonna do brake job on that so that's your kind of modern stuff I'm gonna back her out and take a picture of her and uh, send uh, to my friends and uh, use that as the uh, the thumbnail thumbnail on the, the last video that you saw so you know how these things intertwine so there's something else on my mind but it'll come to me sooner or later it's almost seven o'clock all right cool got to get the big 2305 out this is the opening to the uh, Mazda CX-5 brake job I just got my first package in about it not a sponsor and uh, I do want to tell everybody that there's a possibility that there's a scam out there uh, on my on my channel and I have nothing to do with it I have I'm not giving out any prizes or anything like that so uh, if you see anything like <laughs> I saw uh, Eric O and Rain Man Ray talk about this the other day so just uh, as a good general uh, rule just uh, don't don't if you get offered something like that, go directly to the source and ask them. Uh-oh, watch out. No more reproduction for you. If you open this this plastic bag printed in the USA, printed in the USA. Look, see what that is in it. Look at that in that cute. Do I not get a... Oh, no. There it is. I knew it was in here somewhere. Let's see what we get today. Oh, look at that. Oh, an Avante, I think. Yeah, that's an Avante. Uh, same people that made Corvette bodies. Uh, it's Studebaker Avante, and it was only produced by people over the age of 65. I don't know if y'all knew that about Avante. Very interesting car. Uh, knew somebody in uh, Blowing Nose, Nashville, I have one. It was Boone. It was Boone, somewhere in the mound, somewhere up, up there. Had one of these. It was white with red interior. Pretty thing. Probably could have used a little different background. What do you think? That would be nice. And... Oh, I thought I was going to stick to my metal table, but it didn't. Let's see. We'll try it again. There you go. Boink. Okay, we'll open this up and see what's in here. i got to hold all these receipts because this is not, this is a, another kind of a, a job here. Not, not personal. So this is a pad installation kit. I know a lot of times uh, the pads come with hardware. Uh, the hardware for this entire car front and back is uh, $14, so I just wanted to make sure that I get the very best here because this person's uh, pretty persnickety about their uh, their car, and I just want to make sure I get it exactly right. And I'd rather spend the $15 and get stuck on the job here and then you know have to put old parts back in, so that's the reason I got this. So I believe, I don't know if this is the front or the back. Well, we'll worry about that later. Look at the receipt here. Uh, don't want to steer you wrong. Do, 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 do. I don't have that damn song on. This is, uh, it just says brake hardware. Disc brake hardware. 2019 Mazda CX-5, 2.5 liter, I guess inline four turbo charge. I guess that's L4. And uh, so we'll figure it out later. We'll figure out which which front and back. I think the front ones look a little different. I think this might be the rear kit. We'll worry about it at that time. Somebody's doing a pretty good video here. Let's see who that is. Oh, must be me. These, okay. And let's just. Uh, I have to review everything before it goes on. This was all of my camera lens here. Well, they say they come from different warehouses. Hey, there's a oil filter for the for the BMW. You don't want to look at that. I just want to look and see. I don't care about this so much. Where is it? There it is. What is it this time? Oh, no. I think they, what do they call it, a coronet? I don't remember. Uh, whew, uh, that'll, that'll, uh, that'll go up there, but maybe put it upside down. It'll look better. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so here are the pads for the uh, CX-5. And I 
I, I don't I don't guess the uh, the other hardware kit came. That's okay. We'll figure that out. Uh, don't want to don't want to scratch that up, do we? Uh, let's get our paperwork in order. And this is the stuff I just got like an hour ago. So I guess like they sent from all different warehouses. I don't know. Now your results may vary, but uh, let's see. That would be Act sixteen twenty six. Uh, 1820, 1623, sorry. I was looking at something else. That's, this is the front kit, uh, front pads. And uh, I understand, it does come with hardware, that's good. Didn't know that for sure, and some extra hardware. And uh, you wanna make sure when you take these things apart that you uh, are careful that there's not an inside and an outside. Ooh, got a little lubricant in there. Now. I saw that really nice guy use uh, this brake quiet. I guess that's the same thing, but that comes with it. And uh, all right, good. So that comes with hardware. So I didn't need that hardware kit from earlier, but I don't know that for sure yet. Uh, I'm gonna leave this. That's just warranty. Pretty straightforward putting on brake brake pads most of the time. Okay, so we got that one. Let's take a look at these. And uh, so these are the 1846s, and these are the rears. So I'm pretty certain. Let's make sure everything's in here. Yeah, that comes with the hardware too. I'm going to trust. Ooh, look how much smaller those are, huh? Rear. Just kind of like that. And it comes. It does not come with a little packet of, of, of glory. Uh, it's got the same pads, but uh, I've got tons and tons of brake uh, glue, so no big thing. Like Christmas so you can't get it back out. Oh, right when I say that, can't get it back in there, and then you can. All right, and so we are ready to go. All I need is. Uh, is the car here <laughs> the car is due here in a few minutes and I just got the other <laughs> just in the nick of time the other uh, uh, hardware kit so let's uh, I don't know probably gonna be sending these back now that I have a pretty good array of them to do Oh no, not the, I love the, I wanted these real bad. I'm glad I got these. Look at that little rubber caps and the, the uh, caliper. Uh, okay, I'll keep them in. Because them don't come with them little rubber boots. So, okay, well, what's it going to be? You don't see that. Oh my! Woohoo! That's a hot one there. Way to go, Don. That's a... 59 uh, Chevy Impala kind of lowered and lean and mean mm -hmm. so well let's see what we've collected on this on this job we got an Avante an Impala and a Coronet whatever that thing is all right well boy I, got I mean literally the cars do here in like 10 minutes and it's just came in the mail cool So we're starting the endeavor on a 2019 Mazda CX-5. We're going to do the rear and the front brake pads and kits and everything like that. And we got, I got a ceiling pan, pan, fan to uh, to paint. So that's going to be part. That's not going to be part of this video. But uh, there's the old cross pin from pencil with the tree stump lead in it. Come on, focus, you fact. And that, I'll, I'm going to use this in the shop because it's so durable. But this is what you got to do. Drain the master cylinder down a little bit, the brake fluid out of it. Chalk up front wheels. Turn the e-brake off. Take your foot off the brake pedal. Turn the ignition switch on. And by hitting it twice, and it won't start, but the lights and the dash will come on. 
and then you check, <laughs> double check the e-brake switch to make sure the lamp is off. You hold the accelerator all the way down. You pull, you push down on the e-brake switch and you gotta hold both of those and then you gotta hit the ignition switch three times and then uh, don't, you know, don't have your mouth full when you're doing this now, okay? Listen for the motors in the back to stop running, the emergency brake motors, electric motors, and they have to run until they stop and, and that means you're holding down on them. And then the dash brake, the dash brake lamp switch comes on saying P with an exclamation point over it, which means it's in service mode. And then you turn off the ignition by touching it, pushing it in one time. Okay? <laughs> I find this to be hilarious. But anyway, uh, then you can jack it up. But when you get done with all this, you uh, you do all the stuff, and there's you got to look up your uh, Torx uh, specs. And there's sort of a rundown of the tools, a 21 millimeter. Oh, and be sure when you when you get the wheels up in there to, to do your four corner check to make sure there's no bearing problems or anything's loose. And uh, you got a 21 millimeter wrench, 17, a 14, a 19, brake clean brake gle grease cloths, wire brushes, air nozzles. And uh, from what I have learned on this car, your, your results will vary. Uh, the pins are at 21 pound feet, the wheels at 80 to 108 pound feet. Uh, uniformity is important on the wheels or you'll warp your rotors and you'll get that pulsating in your brake pedal. And then get after you push the uh, pistons in, the rear pistons look like the screw in kind of like an old Nissan uh, uh, or Datsun vehicle, but they're not. Apparently, they're just plain calipers, and you push them, and you don't have to twist them. And once you get everything pushed in, you go and drain the master cylinder and get all the old fluid out, and then you refill it with Dot 4 out of a metal can. And then once you get the whole thing done, you pump the brakes very slowly and get, and get your brake pedal back, because if you back out like that, you're going to crash into stuff. Uh, and then you uh, double check your master cylinder level. So once you get all that going, uh, you have to get it out of maintenance mode. So then you have to hit the ignition su switch twice, push the accelerator to the floor, hold the e-brake switch up and hold it and hit the ignition three times. And you should hear the motors and the P with the exclamation point in the dash should go off and uh, Bob's your auntie as they say. So uh, the fronts are apparently uh, far easier to do. I do recommend that you get the kit. You will see the uh, gliding pins and all that other stuff. And I'm going to probably do what I can to resurface the brake rotors just kind of with a wire wheel and knock some of the glaze off. So that's all there is to it. Uh, I, would, uh, I would say that you look this up uh, and uh, double check everything that I'm doing here, but that's, that's the methodology. Oh, well, let's take a look at that fluid. It looks kind of dark, doesn't it? Why is it like that, I wonder? Well, I'm about to find out, I guess. Uh, well, everything's plastic, isn't it? I'm not used to that, okay. And there'll be a screen in here because this is a Japanese vehicle. Yep. And uh, so we're just gonna suck a little bit of this out of here by whatever means you have. I have these means right here. And I don't need to get a lot out, I just need to get some out, but I gotta get that screen out. I forgot about that. So, it just turned out that I need hemostates here. Oh. Remove wrenched ankle. Well, they don't want that to come out, do they? Well, thwarted by this thing already, that don't make you feel too mechanical, does it? Okay, well there, there it is, I got it. Okay, so now, I think I can get down in there and get some of that out of there. So here we go, ready? Bubble, bubble. That ought to be enough. I don't want to go too low. Okay. So I would go ahead and recommend that you put the uh, 
the cap back on it. All right, and that'll just give us a little bit of room for expansion. I think I'll just put these down here to put up later. Okay, so let's get in here and start pushing buttons. I guess I've pushed buttons to do brakes before. Maybe I don't remember doing pushing buttons to do brakes. Okay, all right. So drain the master a little bit. Chalk up front wheels. E-brake is off. Foot off the brake. Ignition twice. And then there you go. Everything lights up. A little breath of cool wind there. That's nice. Uh, dash lights on, yes. Lamp is still off. Accelerator all the way down and hold. Uh, E-brake, i got to have two hands for this. So you push, you push uh, this down and then you go dot 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 did you hear that all right well I did I heard until they stopped and there's that little lamp right there that we're all looking for that says P with an exclamation point so so far so good turn off ignition and then there there you go all right well that worked Perhaps logic, hadn't heard that in a long time. Hit the green subscribe button. Now I gotta go all the way up to set the jack, and then I'll come back down to a working height. The drips you see are condensate from the air conditioning, that's what you want to see. So well, that's good. Let's one more click here. No, I wasn't in Vietnam. Way before my time. Okay, so we'll rest her back down, and I'll slide my jack in. Now they say there are pinch welds right here, and there they are. I don't know if I can get that thing that far out there, but I'm going to try to get that thing out there. Let's see. So I've got this sliding hoist here, so let's get in place. All right, let's take her up. I've got these arms on the pinch welds. And I have never put my foot on this. <laughs> She's my hands. All right. Now I want to make sure that we don't hit anything other than the pinch wells. Okay, I think that's got her right there. Move your arms carefully in this environment because I just didn't and it hurt. Okay. Okay. Looking good. Sounds like you're listening to AVE, doesn't it? With that hydraulics. Okay, that one's clear. And that one's clear. And this has an automatic lock in it, so okay. So, all right. That looks good to me. All right. Now, we've got that going, so now we got to let her down. I need both hands for that because of this bar here. Get her to a working height. Okay, that looks all good. Okay. Doesn't hurt to look around up in here. Uh, look at the sway bar links, and there are no boots back here. There's the electric motors that we're about to get into. So everything back here looks fine. This vehicle, has, I think, has 30000 on it right at. I didn't look at the odometer. Very clean, very nice. All right, let's let her down. Gotta have our ceremonial up dock alley here. There's the uh, Studebaker Avante. And, uh, there is uh, that one and that one. Starting to look more professional with every order from Rock Auto, don't I? <laughs> so, Sean was interesting the other day. You think he'd know better, and I called it up dock alley. He said, What's that? I said, What's what? Guess what? He, he kept saying it. Up dock. What's up dock? What is it? <laughs> I guess <laughs> I haven't done that to him in a long time, but he just kept saying it. It was pretty funny. All right, so you want to check and make sure you want to pull on them on each 12, 3, 6, and 9, and that feels good. And I can feel the differential locking. That's good. 
There's a uh, And just go ahead and do both of these while you're doing them. So those are really tight. Those are good. I just checked the air pressure in these not long ago, but now's the time. Okay, and you just kind of check the tread wear, which I must say, I don't, I don't think that's really good. Let's go check that. Let's see where we are. Here's the old Harley gauge. And uh, so you got uh, 530 seconds and check them all. So the tire pressure's been good because those are all even. And we're probably 5,000 miles from needing tires. Let's check the other side, just for safety's sake. Now, uh, that one is a little bit thicker for whatever the reason is. So right at five, five and a half, 30 seconds. Okay, so let's go check these while we're at it. Oh, what happened there? Okay, it looks like we're gonna be, well, they're wearing just almost perfectly. So the running, the tire pressure I'm running seems to be fine. Because overinflated, they'd be thinner in the middle and Yep, everything. All right, so those all look good. Okay, good and even. Okay, everything back here looks pretty fair. Now we're changing these because they're making noise. Uh, I would say we're almost uh, well, three, well, let's show them in a minute, four or five millimeters maybe. And uh, just keep looking around. You might see something you didn't see before. Hopefully it won't be something come out and get you. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's get you on here. Okay, so uh, I think we all know the drill here. Uh, pull these pins out, and I think those are fourteens. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to, uh, we're going to just look at these after I take them out, okay? I think there's enough videos on these, but I'm going to just cover a couple little fine points here. So get your little pocket screwdriver and go right here, and that'll click, and you can take that off and look in there. Those look pretty good. And I've already got it wired. Put that there for now. And, uh... Those pads don't look bad at all, but they're making noise, so. Uh, well, this is gonna take a little bit of doing, but you'll see in a second. Okay, so we don't have hardly any lip here. Uh, so, and see, we got a lot of pad. We got a lot of pad left, but something's wrong back here. So we gotta make a note of, uh, I think they're just not being driven hard enough, maybe, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, that'll happen. So take these off and be careful because these things will cut you. So make a note that the squealer is down. Okay. Um, and it has double squealers. That's interesting. And uh, those don't look that much different. Now what will get you here is... Uh, this part here, this in where, where my fingers setting, the inside parts here and here, that'll hit that right there. Now I hear people tell that these are different. So there's your bottom one, and there's your top one. And uh, I don't see any reason to take this bracket off, but you do want to when you pull these out, you want to uh, get your air. You don't want any air down in those slides. Air. You don't want any dirt down in them slides. Okay. So they don't feel terrible. But I'm gonna probably pull them out. That one feels kind of stiff right there, so we're gonna we're gonna worry about that one. Okay, I got this brush, but I don't really think I need it. It's just uh, I'm gonna get a power. Uh, a power uh, wire brush and go around these rotors and get some uh, brake clean. I think it's behind me. Yep. 
You ready? Da -da -da. Not a sponsor. Okay. So I'm gonna go go around these things and then spray them off, and then that's it's gonna be pretty easy, I think. This is not not bad. Let's settle this once and for all. <coughs> No, these are all the same. Those are all equal there. Now, you'll see some guys up north put uh, grease right here, something to stop the rust jacking. We don't have that problem here, at least not on this car. So, I was worried about that thing being different, but I see that it's not. So, okay, so I've already swirled around with, uh, with the gun. You can see the swirl marks there. So, let's spray it down with this, and I'll start comparing pieces here. I guess this is a balancing tech. Look how that groove is cut into that. It's not up here. I guess that, I don't know if that's some kind of other manufacturer error or if they actually balance these, but it kind of goes from here to there, that little groove. Isn't that interesting? You got a couple of things to look at when you put these, these in. Uh, one is clip it here and then just push it like that and it'll clip in, just push it from, from this part and you'll find that makes it go in extra nice there. But it's also evident to me that there's another, that piece right there looks like it could cause a, a scraping noise. So just uh, make sure that, that none of that's hitting and it looks good to me. Okay, it looks good to me. All right. All right, let me get both hands on it and get those pads in there. Now I'm getting ready to squeeze this piston back in. And when you put your grease on these things, just don't willy nilly slab them all over here. Put them on the fingers here. So it just goes where it needs to go. Those are not incredibly difficult to do. The little spring, this little spring right here goes onto this. It doesn't go under it, it goes, it slides on like this, okay? So, and there's just, I just got a, just a little kiss of grease in there, just enough. So let's get that piston back in there. And that's why we drained the fluid out of the master so we could do that. So let me get my tool for that. And my tool is gonna be different and I don't wanna hear anybody's grief about it. So I'm not gonna show you what it is. Okay, so we got some grease on these. Okay, and that just pops right back into place. And I've already got a little bit of grease on the on what needs to be on the that cylinder. Yeah, that one feels a little dry. Now you'll notice this one has the little rubber bumper on it. So if you get confused, the rubber bumper goes on the bottom. Okay. So there's just a little bit of grease will do you. Let's uh, spread that out some. Okay. And then you put it back in. Okay. All right, and close that up so you don't knock dirt into it. Brush in can. Give them a little bit of a spin to get the grease distributed in there. Now hang that back on. Don't forget to plug this in. Okay, and uh, I think we're about ready here. Uh, okay. So if you end up needing it, these are 14s, these are 19s, if you end up needing to back those up with something, okay? And uh, let's get these out of my, out of my sight. And uh, so I don't know, I guess there was some kind of hardware issue causing it to make noise. I don't know, so now spin them around. It wasn't hard to get back on once you squeeze it in there. Okay, so I used a C-clamp, so sue me. Okay, click this on, right? Always be very deliberate and straight with these. Click, all right, good. And uh, that'll be about it for this side. And uh, that's my first one. So the next one, of course, I won't film, but I will be filming the, the front one over here, right? Right, right, right. 
Okay, I've got this side done. So I'm going to go to the front now. So move your chocks to the back. I already got the jack up there. I'm ready to go up on the front end. Uh, they sound good. I can see how a lot of things could go wrong uh, in this Endeavor. Uh, simply because of the nature of the all the little fiddly bits and the little squealers that uh, are on the pads. So it could go, I mean, you can not go wrong so much, but be noisy. Good way to break your thumb there. I'm just trying not to do that today. I'll save that for tomorrow. Okay, we're on the front now. And uh, where's the ABS thing? It's way down the tone rings, way up inside the rotor from what I can tell. Well, that's a meaty son of a gun right there, isn't it? Anyway, what do you know one of my hairs? Okay, uh, so I'm going to tie this off. Look, it got L on it, so you'll know it's left. Like you're going to be moving those around, huh? Guess it's possible. The trick to calipers is, some people do this, they'll take them both off, put them on the wrong side. Can't figure out why they won't bleed, because the bleeder's down here. So I've seen that happen. Can't get the brakes to bleed, boy. Put it together backwards. <laughs> Well, this one's a little different, a little complicated thing. So you got these pads with a little grease in the middle of them there. Those got a lot of meat on it, but we're changing them anyway. And notice that the pins are different, the upper pin. Oh, walk like an Egyptian. I would say that these have a lot of meat on them, but they were not wearing evenly for whatever reason. And this one's cracked. But this is the method. You get your old uh, uh, brake pad, and you can pull both pistons. I didn't know it was a dual piston up front. That's pretty cool. So I'm impressed by that. And uh, so here's the, the new pads. I don't think I'm going to use all this other stuff that was on the original. That's a lot of stuff. So just get your hardware clean uh, in there and clean it. A little bit of grease on it will be fine. But this will pull both pistons back evenly. The front brakes are so easy, there's no sense in going into it. I mean, it's just so, it's, if you do the back, front's gonna be a cakewalk. Uh, the only thing I would tell you is just use that double method for the uh, brake pad to push the pistons in and then change your stuff. It's clean, it just can't be more easy. So let's torque them down. Battery. Okay, if I run out of battery, I'll just have to explain the rest of it later. Co click. Actual clickage. As Rayman says, I'm rather surprised at this. It didn't really put a lot more fluid up in there. Uh, I thought it would be a lot closer to the top, but let's uh, let's just pull out of there what we can. We'll put some fresh in it. So this is what you want to use. This comes directly from Germany. Very expensive stuff. And it's better, so just get that. Okay, it's completely fresh. Look how clean it is. See, all the way to the bottom. Good stuff. A lot of times you'll open stuff in plastic bottles and it'll be a little bit foggy already. There seems to be a pretty, I don't know if that's on the outside of the thing or whatever, but this is gonna be great. Okay. Uh, that's the problem sometimes you can't see it I see it though so we're going to very carefully now this stuff is so dangerous and it's like coke I always put the lid on very tight if you want it to be good next time should have cut them things off when I had the chance but I always cut them tabs off so if any children get in here they can just get that right open and swallow it so. Okay, I'll push it down in there. Okay, now let's see what happens. We're gonna take this with us. Gotta know how to use hemostats in the world, don't you? Let's just put it there. Now, don't do anything right now except for very carefully press on the brake pedal. 
and just just be as gentle as you know how to be and it's gonna it's gonna have nothing going there okay now I got a little bit of a pedal okay and that's good okay nothing's running right right now let's go back out here and check this fluid again and see how much we took up not it's not on the max mark so it did take some so let's put let's let's just get it to the maximum i knew i shouldn't have put that on there all the way hard okay gonna top this off okay okay all topped off and that, that's a heavy bonnet I didn't think it'd be so heavy on this car for some reason. I don't know why I thought that. I did. Okay, so now let's do all this rig and the roll. And we're going to be listening for the motors. Okay, so ignition twice, foot off the brake, beep, beep. Okay, everything lit up. Accelerator to the floor. E brake switch up and hold and hit this one, two, three. I heard them. Okay, now the, the maintenance light is off. I could hear them uh, talking to me back there, so I guess I did it. So we're going to go out there and find out. Okay, foot on the brake. Oh, that's a diff pedal there. I'll just keep pumping it, though. There you go. Now she's coming. She did kind of let go a little bit. Okay, so let's take her out. Fancy cam box you got hold of there. Make sure the mirrors aren't going to mess up my lift. Oh, I hate to scar up my lift with this car. <laughs> All right, the brakes feel great. Let's see if the emergency brakes work. So we're going to put her in park, and we're going to pull up on this, and we're going to put her in drive. Whoa, that's holding great. I'm in drive, and we'll turn we'll turn him off, and you got to have your foot on the brake. There it goes. I felt him let off. Well, let me get my safety click in right here, and we'll go take her up the road, and then that's going to be it. Test them a few times in your driveway. Ooh, boy, that's really something. Let's get these windows up. All right. Whoa, things got some power. Okay, they're not pulling or anything. I don't hear any noises. My hearing is rather acute also. So I do have tinnitus, but it's not so bad. And I did break both of my eardrums water skiing. Somehow I recovered. Okay, this is where you can get killed real easily, death by corn. Alright, we got her. Got her this way. Oh boy. Brandy's gonna taste good. A little bit of brandy, okay. Let's just try. Somebody's coming up behind. Okay, let's see. Okay, somebody's coming, so let me get down here to the next road. I have been around plenty. I think they're bedded in. And uh, we're doing fine, so. Let's, uh. I'm very happy with it. It's better than it was. And it's very, very quiet. All right, I can't. Okay, so be sure and give me a thumbs up. And hit likes and subscribings down there. And I sure would appreciate it. And uh, let's park this thing out in the sun because I got to put my old truck away. My truck's been sitting outside. That ain't no good. Right. Never been around the back of the barn, have you? Well, I've been trying to keep the weeds down, but it ain't working out too good. I'm going to put it back in so it'll be in the shade. 
All right, so we're gonna put it right up here. All right, nice and in the shade. Okay, bye-bye guys. Thanks for watching.